everyone, and welcome back to Mighty Ride Junkies. If you've been keeping up, then you know I've been covering Six Flags Magic Mountain. Uh, before we continue in this video, I want to apologize for the last video. Um, I was fighting a really bad flu. I don't know what I was thinking and recording a video. I apologize. I feel great now, so go ahead and just take that other video in, throw it in the garbage. So today, we're going to be covering all the rides that are still here today from the 1980s. Before we start, if you want to know more about the 1970s of the park or the ride's history, you can find those videos on my channel. So the first ride we're going to cover today is kind of a dud. Not so much that the ride isn't enjoyable, but it's one of those rides like the merry-go-round you can pretty much find in every park, and that's Buccaneer, a typical swinging pirate ship. It opened in 1980 at the park, rotating at about... 53 degrees at its highest point and it weighs about 15 tons as for how many rotations it gets this solely depends on how long the line is the longer the line the less rotations the ride will get and obviously the line is shorter it'll get a little bit more rotations and that's all i have to say about that moving on to the next year 1981 is another ride i hope six flags never demolishes and that's roaring rapids Unlike most river rapid rides that have a turning table, this one was your typical loading station. The main reason for this was that Roaring Rapids was one of the first river rapid rides. The very first was called Thunder River that opened one year prior at Magic Mountain's sister park, Astroworld. Sadly, Astroworld doesn't exist anymore and neither does Thunder River, which makes Roaring Rapids so special as it's the oldest working river rapid ride. It takes about three minutes to get through this ride, but I should warn you, the river is wide and the river boat will literally go in all sorts of directions. Think of yourself as a bowling ball being bowled by a rookie bowler, except the bumpers are up. You will bounce off rocks, hard, I might add, and bounce as you go through many various of rapids. Because the river is so wide, you gather a lot more speed before hitting a rapid, causing a lot of water to go on board like any good rapid ride should be. Now moving on to another ride I'm not going to spend too much time on and that's Swashbuckler that opened in 1983. The Swashbuckler is a smaller version of the Flying Swings that like Buccaneer you can pretty much find in every park. The ride hasn't seen any rethemes and hasn't really had any changes done to it other than your annual refurbishments. So let's move on. So now we're going to go a couple years down to 1988 when Six Flags Magic Mountain opened the fastest suspended roller coaster in the world, Ninja. Reaching speeds of 55 miles an hour as you're dangled 60 feet in the air down 2,700 feet of track, Ninja can be found as a moderately intense ride for roller coaster newbies. While the G-Force doesn't even break 3.0, the ride still can be intense as the dangling coaster cars can turn sideways up to 35 degrees on a track that is already causing you to turn on your side, giving the illusion that you're completely on your side. This ride has a really good re-ride value during a visit. Riding it during the day has you cutting through trees and diving towards water, while at night, because of the trees and the lack of light making it so dark, it feels almost like you're going to hit a tree before swerving out of the way, which honestly is a lot of fun. However, the closeness of the trees has caused problems. On July 7th, 2014, during Six Flags peak season, one of the branches from a nearby tree landed on top of the track, causing the oncoming train to derail. Now, before you go thinking they flew off the track and plummeted to the ground, Understand Ninja is a seven vehicle coaster, meaning when the coaster hit the actual branch, only the first two were severely affected from the crash. They were basically dangling almost from the coasters that were still on the track. Out of the 22 people, only two had to go to the hospital for minor injuries. So now we move on to the end of the decade, 1989 with Tidal Wave, another water ride. If you're keeping track, that's four at this point. You have Log Jammers, Jetstream, Roaring Rapids, and now Tidal Wave. 
What's worse is the ride wasn't designed because Six Flags was out of ideas, but because people demanded another water ride from Magic Mountain to battle the hot summer sun of Southern California. If you build it, he will come. This is a short, quick water ride that if you're looking to get soaked, this ride is for you. It simply goes up its lift before sending you down a 50 foot drop. And due to the log being so large and in a smaller condensed space, the water will come at you like a tidal wave. See what I did there? However, if you're going to Six Flags Magic Mountain anytime soon, don't expect to enjoy this ride. It closed down in April of 2016 in order to put in a new lift mechanism. And when they were done, the park must have realized it would have to shortly close again for construction of a new land that I'm super excited about. The ride will open again probably later this year, but the entrance will be moved so not to interfere with the new theme of the new land. And that, ladies and gentlemen, wraps up Six Flags Magic Mountain's current rides that opened in the 1980s. Feel free to leave a comment on what you like and what you'd like to see. If you learned something, give that like button a click and subscribe. I can't wait for our next video, which is the 1990s, which is near and dear to my heart. So see you then. Thanks and have a good day.